Good evening, my Christian friends on the internet and here at the church. We welcome you again to our Bible study at First Baptist of Washington Hills as we take another study into God's Word. We thank our pastor, Pastor Ronnie Bullock, for allowing me an opportunity to teach this Word tonight. But first of all, we want to say to all of you, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let us rejoice and be glad that we are able to study God's word. Before we go any further, let us say a prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yes, Thanking you, Father, once again that we are able to meet one more time on this side of eternity. We thank you, Lord your word today that we will let your Holy Spirit come and teach us what thus said the Lord. Yeah. Realizing Father that we teaching days are here and we're so glad about it because yeah. Yeah. we all need to be taught. We can always learn no matter who we are or how much we know. We can always learn from your word. We bless, ask you to bless our sick and shed in. Yeah. Bless our pastor and his wife and family. Yeah. And Father God, bless each and every one who is listening on the internet and those who are attending in person at the church. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We welcome you once again, my sisters and brothers. For we realize that in one of these days, teaching and praying days will be over. But while we are here, yeah. while we're going through this untimely situations that we go through every day, we realize no matter what happened, that God is still in control and he's going to be in control. Yeah. But, you know, we as children of God have to do our part to make this world just a little bit better. But you see, even though there's all kind of killings going on, kind of different situation, road rage stuff, and, and people hating on each other, we still can do our part in our corner of the world Amen. to make it a little more joyful, a little more uh, able to stand this race. Father God, we thank you that we thought we talked today on kindness. Yeah. Now, you know, there's a, a lot of mean people in this world. And the same energy they put out for being cruel and, and being uh, 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 being disrespectful or whatever you want to call it, that same kind of energy they can use to have kindness. Show kind of this world would be a better place. You know, and so as we look, we don't have to go far. This old Bible world, last few years, we've seen all kind of madness, all kind of killings, all kind of. It looked like our kids, our school kids, are uh, getting it more than anybody. And we see all the shootings in the schools and different things. I'm going to start out with Leviticus. 19th chapter and uh, excuse me at the 18th verse thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself I am the Lord. Yeah. That right there, that verse right there. You know, if we would all try to live part <coughs> of what that verse said right there, we would show more kindness everywhere we go. It don't say if somebody treats you good, you treat them good. It said, love your neighbor as yourself. Right. You see, and so I think we've gotten away from this in our world today. Because it looks like there's hatred, like I said, hatred all around. 
people will put up an automatic weapon and blow you away. When I come along in school, we did, we got into fights and all the rest of the stuff, but we live to see another day. Yeah. You know, now, it's, when they pull out these guns, it's over. And so that is not good at all. You see, but if we was to love our neighbor as ourselves, I have never heard of anybody not liking themselves. You understand? Because when we get home, we go and get us something to eat. We get cold, we put cold on us. If we get hot, we try to get a little air. Yeah. And when my body starts, well, some of us got a certain time that we wash, but a lot of people will wait till they smell themselves before they wash themselves, but that's part of loving yourself. Yeah. And look what it, it said, I am the Lord. This is the Lord talking. Yeah. Love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. You remember that uh, this was one of the verses that uh, the apostle, one of the apostles, I can't even call his name, but anyway, he asked the Lord about what was the, that law you were trying to, he told him to love the Lord God with all your heart and soul and mind and everything you got. You love the Lord. And the second one was like unto do it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Look what kind of world we will live in if we love our neighbor as ourselves. Look, look, look what kind of, we wouldn't have to worry about blocking up too much like we do now. We wouldn't have to worry about a lot of things. We wouldn't have to worry about sending our kids to school and thinking, are they going to come back or something going to happen to them? When I was coming along, we parents didn't have to worry about that because that was, I ain't going to say it was the best, but there was something about loving your neighbor. In our neighborhood, you know what? When the neighbor saw you doing something wrong, a lot of times they would say, uh, well, they said to me, I don't know if they said to you, boy, your daddy know what you're doing? And that would stop me in my track. They were looking out for other neighbor's kids. We might not have liked it. We might have said, I wish they'd leave me alone. But you know, as I got older, I realized they were really looking out for us. Making sure, because they know if our daddy know we were doing something wrong, a switch was coming out of our bed. But we don't seem to live that way no more. And that was a good way of living. You see? We thought they were being bad and being lonely, but they were really showing us kindness. And kindness is just a, a love they wish had for us. Amen. You see? That's all. And so, as we look here at this verse, this first verse, he said, Thou shalt not avenge. Oh, bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, you know what? You can't avenge. He said, do not avenge. Don't bear any grudge. Amen. Don't hold no grudge against nobody. Amen. Amen. He said, don't have any grudge against the children of thy people. Right. So we, we, we ought to always love them. I used to hear the Indian, like they said, the Indian village, they said, take, just take one, I think it's something like this, one, one, one person to, to bear a child, but it take a whole village to raise it. Amen. And so we done got away from that, and we're not doing like we used to do. We thought, uh, you know, child, these parents would get together and tell, I saw your boy doing this, and the mom would come home and say, boy, Give me that switch. <laughs> and they would tear your butt up and wouldn't even ask you sometimes. So and so told me what you did, and you gonna get it. Amen. We learned to not let them see us or not stop doing it. You know, get away from her. But it took a village, it took a whole community to raise kids. Cause mom's eye can't be everywhere. Dad's eye can't be everywhere. But, but, but see, God can. 
Look what he says at the end of that verse. I am the Lord. God's eye is everywhere. And we need to re realize that God sees all, even though he, he may not come upon us right now. A time is coming when he's going to get this thing straight. He's going to set it straight. And so if you have a nice forgiveness for the sins that you have done, may the Lord have mercy on you. Because all you got to do is repent. That's all you got to do. God know we couldn't keep no, those uh, commandments. He knew that. That's why he sent Christ. That if we believe in his blood, that he died and rose again. And by the blood that he shed. Yeah. Amen. We yeah. can get forgiveness for all our sins. Because yeah. when I look back on my record, I, I hate to think about what would happen to me. Of some of the stuff I done did, I done forgot, but I still ask God to forgive me yeah. for my sins. And that's what every child of God ought to do. Yeah. Amen. 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 So we can't remember everything, but you better believe God got it on the record. Matter of fact, one of the scriptures said, as a record being kept in heaven, and you can't do wrong and get by. Amen. You might have thought you got by, but God got it on record. Everything that you have not asked forgiveness for. It's so simple. God, forgive me for my sin. It's all you have to do. mean it from your heart. You just don't play with God. Yeah. We used to hear our parents say that, well, don't play with God. You know, and uh, the pastor said something one Sunday he was preaching. He said something that struck home with me. Uh, what he said was that his mother told him at one time when he was growing up that she was going to return an oath to leave him in the hands of the Lord. You know, my mama told me that one day. I think I was about 15, and she said, boy, I'm tired of fooling with you. I'm going to leave and just turn you over to the hands of the Lord. I thought, mama, don't do that. Don't do that. I didn't tell her that, but that's what I was thinking. I said, I can't lie no more. I, you know, God knows when you're lying. I said, I've been lying to mama and doing all kinds of stuff. And she said, I'm leaving it in the hands of the Lord. And this is a thing that parents, you can do for your kids. Is leave them in God's hand and let them know that you're doing it. That'll bring a change about it. Well, it did me. I started trying to do a little better, you know. I ain't saying I was all sanctified and stuff, but I started trying to do better because I realized I couldn't lie to God. Amen. And so, and so, let's show a little kindness. Because, you know, when you think about it, a lot of the stuff that these kids going through today, we've been through it. We've been through a lot of that stuff. It had not been for God getting us through a lot of that stuff, we might have been dead. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So, so what's that next verse up there? 19. Is it up there? Yeah. Okay. okay. You shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let any cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow any field with mingle seed. Neither shall a garment mingle of linen and wool come upon thee. Now, uh, this is 19. He's trying to tell them that we, we need to keep God's statute. Some people say, well, that's old-fashioned. No, it's going to be old, but God is old. God is the one that made everything. God is old, so everything that we read in the Bible is going to be old. Amen? Amen? And so, but these things, <clears throat> see, God knows all. And what he wrote way back then is still good for you to live by the day. Amen. 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 They said, well, you old folk and you old bachelor. I might be, but God the one that put these, let these men write these verses. And so, and he right here, he's telling them how to keep the cattle straight. 
Amen. Don't let that cattle, cattle, uh, don't let it go and mix up with uh, the worst kind. <coughs> don't show seed. Don't show thy field of seed with mingle seed. <coughs> and don't get a garment mingled with linen and woolen come upon thee. You tell them how to dress. Tell them what to wear and what not to wear. When you think about it, if you read this Bible, you'll find out that everything in it will bless you or curse you. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 But if you do what God says, it will bless you. But if you read it and just go on about your business, it will curse you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, <clears throat> let's go to the next one, sister. 30, is it 30? 33. And say, if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, you shall not vex him. Now, if you, there were strangers living among them, and so he was telling them, you, the stranger is going to be a part of your family. This stranger is going to, you're going to love him the same way that uh, you love one another, you love this stranger. God is watching. He see how you treat people. Amen. He said, you should not vex him. Don't put no rules off on him that if you ain't keeping yourself, you see. The rules that God set down are for everybody. And if you go by God's rule, that's, it's like when we were coming up, uh, I didn't know it then, but I found out later a lot of people wouldn't spend the night in our house if the next day was a Sunday because they won't have to go to church. And they knew it. They know my daddy won't have them living there if they weren't going to church the next day. So they would find them somewhere else to stay if they stayed. But he's telling them right in, if you got a stranger living with you in your land, don't vex him. Don't, don't, don't uh, treat him different. He is become a part of you. Yeah. He do the same thing for you, the same thing for a stranger. All right. He he said the stranger is the stranger that dwelling with you shall be unto you as one born upon you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. They were strangers. God don't let them forget what they went through when they were in Egypt. How they were slaves down there. Amen. Amen. And he don't let us forget how we were once. Not fit to live and not fit to die. But he loved us anyhow. He loved us. And matter of fact, he loved us so much that he made us. See, uh, that we could become a brother to Jesus, we can become his sons and daughters. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. While we were yet, I think, I think when we didn't have a God on our side, yeah. didn't have nobody that really cared about us, God stretched out his hands for us. Praise the Lord. Didn't he do it? Yeah. He said, I got something for you. Believe in my son Jesus. Right. Ain't that a good God? Right. All you got to do is believe. He didn't make it so that, hey, this is what you got to do. You gotta, he said, if, yeah. if you would do. In other words, you don't have to do it if you want. That's why we got this world. It's like it is. That's why we got a lot of killings going on. That's why we got a lot of robbing going on. No, some did not accept. Gee, uh, the God our Father did not accept what he offered. They were to go another way. But he told them what's going to happen. In the end, I don't want to be an alien in their shoes in the end. Amen. Amen. Those that have not accepted Christ. Look what he says here. You shall do no unrighteousness and judgment in measure and weight of in measure. He said if you was a merchant, you know they had some crooked merchants. Some had a, had a weight they weighed 
when they bought and they had a different weight when they sold. Yeah. He said, you don't do no unrighteousness in judgment in Matthew. That's in weight and in measure. That's when uh, you're selling the flour and all the different wheat and stuff. So you do it right. Don't try to cheat nobody, you know. Yeah. I've heard about it, but I ain't, that was a time when I was a kid that they used to balance, they put, you go buy a certain amount of baloney or a certain amount of ham, they'd have a scale there. A lot of times that guy would put his hand on that scale to make it weight more. But God is telling us, don't no, do that. He said, have just balances, just what, <coughs> excuse me, just weights. Yes, alphabet, that's the flower. Just him. Everything you do shall be just. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Yeah. Thank God already. Yes. Amen. What's our next one, sister? Is that it? Well, what I wanted in this thing to see that, uh, God is a just God and he wants us to be fair in our dealing. And you know, we as children of God, we've been through something yeah. in this world because you know, certain things we can't we can't do. Somebody said because our education we can't do this. Somebody said because our skin color we can't do that. But I want you to know if you trust in God yeah. Amen. Yeah. You let him have his way. Right. Yeah. Amen. Oh, do the right. Okay. Look at this in Deuteronomy 22 and 1. Thou shalt not seek thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto your brother. Right. What he's saying here, if you see your brother's sheep or see his cattle go astray, don't hide your eyes and act like you don't see them. This was very, this got very personal with me, but when I was a boy, about, I guess I was about 10 years old, we spent the summer in my grandfather's house in Alabama. We spent the whole summer out there. And, uh, I'm telling you, I didn't really like it because what I thought was them having fun really turned out to be work. <laughs> they worked every day, one no day off. But one day, he saw these two mules coming up the road. And uh, he looked at them mules and he said, that's old little George mule. And he got them and put them in his barn. He said, I let him know I got him and I give him to him. And that's what he did. Little George came and got his view later on that week. I said, that's what God wants to do. When you see somebody stuff and you know who it is, he don't want you to go grab that trunk about losers, weepers. Mm -hmm. Huh? Is that where they go? How did that go? Losers, weepers, finders, keepers. That ain't where it go. When you see something you know it belongs to somebody else, God wants you to give it back to them. Yeah, I learned yeah. that when I was about 10 or 11 years old. And I thought, man, I was wondering why he was doing it. I thought he was putting the mules up to go keep them. But no, he put the mules up. So they wanted, because mules was, that's for tractors. So they had tractors. Mules were where they made their living. Where they plowed them fields and he put them up in his barn so he could get them. And that stuck with me for years. I always thought about that. Then one day I finally realized that he was just being a Christian. He was just being, that's what you do when you see somebody stuck. Or somebody, man, what you call got your stuff? We used to call them snitches. See somebody stealing something. Well, yeah, well they'll tell you. They call them stitches all they want to, but they, we got a higher up to answer to Amen. than the one that's stealing. We got to answer to God. Amen. And you got to do your part. Amen? Amen. 
He said, If thy brother be not near thee, nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it into thy own house. That's exactly what my granddaddy did. One I'm named now. And it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it. And thou shalt restore it unto him again. That's, I saw this in the uh, you know, this is, I didn't know it was in the Bible. It really just now. But, you know, I was thinking, oh, right there, we're living in the Bible. Yeah. But they went to church, they knew. They knew what honesty was. Yeah. And that's all that is, being honest. Yeah. Amen. And so, and so we got to, as children of God, is your duty to do and be the best that you can be. Right. Amen. 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 Don't make no difference what nobody say about you. And the final analysis, you want to hear God say, Well done, our good and faithful servant. That's what this life that we live ought to be about. Getting to hear God say, Well done, because when you have somebody, that's down on the luck. God said, you did the least, you did the, to the least of them, you did it unto me. Amen. So you were really helping God, you see? And so that's what we got to live this life. I like that old song, but the Lord, you ought to live so God can use you. Anywhere, anytime. You ought to always be willing to do what God said to the Lord. Amen. I'm about ready to close, Sister Sheer. We're going to talk, that is being kind, and that ain't nothing but love, showing love to somebody. It's a whole lot easier to show love, but I label it kindness. You can be kind. Yeah. You know, sometimes a, a dog, people are kinder to dogs than they are to human beings. But yeah. Yeah. They want to pay for it one of these those days. God loves his animals now, don't get me wrong, because he made them. But we need to be kind to each other. Whenever we hear that there's a need, we ought to try to do something about it. Amen. 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 Are there any questions? If not, we're going to close out. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity one more time. Father, we thank you for those that are here and those that are on the internet. We hope that something have been said tonight that make them realize that our job is to be kind, our job is to love one another, Man. our job is to do what thus said the Lord. Man. And when this life is over, when the blood stop running warm and I'm burning, we can hear him say, well done, our good and faithful servant. Yeah. Yeah. So prayer, we pray for everyone here. Pray again if I was sick and shut in and I will pass it and it's way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.